in this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes. Your favorite farrier is out, your favorite veterinarian is out, a whole lot happens at our organization. We have adoptions, employee education, a whole lot more. You're not going to want to miss a single minute of Horse Shelter Heroes. Right now, Justin and Jason are measuring for the stall fronts. Uh, they're going to be coming down from Ohio, and um, it's going to be really great. They're going to be completely open, so if we come by to look at a horse that has, you know, a bandage on its leg, or we're keeping track of something, or a baby, we'll be able to see the horses from the entire stall front. So they're just getting that measured, and uh, then we also have the guys putting in the garage doors today. So uh, this barn is coming right along. It's a little bit slower now um, that it's up, but. This side is all gonna be framed in. We're gonna have a surgery room, an exam room, medical supplies. So it'll be great to see this really coming along and uh, having this ready for winter is the, the hope and goal. Our surrender is here, so we're gonna go out and um, help him get his horse unloaded. So this horse, is she, I'm trying to remember all the surrenders I've talked to, is she handle, can you handle her? Oh, I've ridden her, yeah. You, can you, handle, have, her. you can handle her, okay. Yeah. So we have a surrender form that tells us a lot of information about the horse that's being surrendered, gives our trainers and the vet uh, information about each horse that is surrendered to us and helps us with their care and evaluations. Well, April is a beautiful horse and we're so glad that she's here. We just had a donation of some um, tack from somebody who drove all the way from Alabama. And we just are so appreciative. Thank you so much for your donation. And we appreciate all of our donors. Thank you. Today I have Brittany here. She has been wanting to come out and volunteer. And uh, she came out today and it's a great day because Doc is here. And so she's gonna be kind of hanging out and watching the vet process. Um, what have you been doing so far today? Oh, uh, well, I groomed, well, she's still over there. Ima, uh, went and saw TG, Amber, Joy, and Journey. Yeah, uh, Brittany's been having fun here today, but now Doc's here, so it's time to get busy. Um, and who knows how much hands-on we'll uh, get with this, um, but Sarah kind of takes the lead. She's in charge of animal health here, um, so you'll kind of just kind of assist Sarah and then um, jump in as they ask you. All right, okay. All right. This is Denny. She's been having a snotty nose off and on and a cough, so we wanted to listen to her lungs and see if Doc had any other suggestions for her. Got a pretty bad sinus infection, so we're gonna swip, swap antibiotics. She's been on the same antibiotic off and on for several weeks, so hopefully it straightens it up. She's a pretty horse. Where are you going? I have to go back to the office. Um, this thing called paperwork and management, and yeah, and we're getting all ready for a, one of our employee events tomorrow, so yeah, I don't wanna leave, but I have to. Have fun. Yeah. We are going to go um, look at Skinny, the donkey that came in as an owner's surrender last week. Well, Skinny is not a gelded jack, but after today, he will be. Donkeys are a little bit better endowed there than horses. So a lot of times they bleed a little bit more. So far we haven't lost any donkeys, but they always bleed more than horses. I always like them to bleed a little bit because it's sort of nature's cleaning cycle, but we'll keep an eye on him. This is Amber. She's getting checked for some possible DSLD and possibly preg check. She um, has what's called DSLD, and you can ask Doc if you want the really long term for that. that well, basically the tendons get loose. The suspensory ligament that holds it up and gives you some spring action, it gets sprung and the, and the fetlock just hits the ground. 
Bourbon is next. Bourbon is the um, blind gelding that his breathing wasn't good, and this his breathing has gotten worse, and this is on meds, like he's on meds right what now. What meds is he on? Have we seen try. him before? Yes, you saw him last week. We put him on try his. He could, you know, his lungs sound pretty good. He could have a heart problem because he's because he's stocking up, and that's what you do with that. And his lungs don't do not sound that bad. He's not healthy. Something's wrong. Pretty serious with him. Sadly, there is nothing we can do except say goodbye. I wish it could be different, but sadly, this is the real reality of rescue. Sometimes. His top line, I feel like he's lost weight, but then I feel like his tummy's a little bit bigger. Floppy lip. <laughs> we are now going to the 10 stall barn because we have a horse named April that came in today and we're just gonna have Doc do an overall health check on her. So we just need an overall health thing on her. They said that in the winter time, she gets arthritis. She gets for a 20 year old, she probably does have some arthritis in her. Looks like she's standing up pretty good. She's in pretty good shape for a 20 year old. He has just been castrated while he was, and he had a big mass there. We just wanted to make sure it wasn't a, was not a testicle. What it was, and it was just scar tissue. Uh, we gotta stop the infection before it, it eats through a tendon, but we're still walking good and everything. And sometimes they'll rebuild some, but we've got some tissue. I think next week we're planning on, we're treating, treating, we're probably next week we'll tranquilize and trim the proud flesh off the heel and really do, and take a real close look at that, but it doesn't look bad now. So I'm just writing my notes. Doc just left for the day. Um, he came out and checked on several of the horses, as you may have already seen. And um, three of the horses that were on our watch list from this last auction were just not doing well. Um, we had Iris, um, she was one of the mares that came in. Um, she had a vaginal tear, she had laminus in her hock, she had trouble breathing, her lungs were not doing good at all. Um, so we had to say goodbye to her today. Bailey was so sweet, she was only a year and a half old, which is so sad. Like when you have to put ones down that are just that young. They're just starting their life. Um, she had really, really bad DSLD. She had a sunken eye that from an injury, we're thinking. Um, and she also had trouble breathing. We said goodbye to her too. And we're not sure what her life was before she got here. She was only a year and a half old. Um, but we hope that she did see some love and everything while she was here. And the other one was a Dare, I think is how you say its name. Um, it was 21 years old, um, metabolic dis disorder, um, diarrhea, like there was no tomorrow, poor thing. You know, he wasn't here very long and we did have to say goodbye to him, but you know, even though it's hard, um, some people think that it's just our everyday life, so it doesn't, it's not hard, but I wanna tell you it definitely is very hard, especially going home after days like this. But we know we did what was right for them and we left them for long as we could. And um, we'll just keep rescuing more horses just like these guys. All right, so I am headed to town. Uh, the exciting thing is that our manure spreader came in at Tractor Supply. So I'm gonna go pick it up. Um, whoa, we've got some uh, items here that we sold on our website. Uh, they're going to Australia. And then this ginormous box is our uh, sharps container machine that melts the sharps and it's not working so we have to ship it back and then i got peppermint tea here because i like peppermint tea so i also have to get gas and diesel because we're out of all that and i gotta hook up the trailer uh because the manure spreader is not gonna fit in the back of the truck so i got a bunch to do i need justin There is a cow in the road and it doesn't belong there. Sometimes these calves just kind of crawl through it. Like see the hair there? He just crawled through the fence. So 
bad calf. Let's get him off the road. Keep going, there you go, you cut him off. All right. Yay, he's in the pasture. Good job, Justin. So I think he's back with his mom now. They'll be happy. Right, we're just gonna pull into the post office, mail the packages, and then head to Tractor Supply and pick up that manure spreader. Tractor Supply has always been super, super great uh, to Horse Plus over the years. So we love supporting Tractor Supply. There is no animal shelter in this county that takes dogs and cats. And well, there is a, there's a, a humane society ran out of somebody's home that does take dogs, mainly puppies, but there's nobody that takes cats. So we don't want them getting hit on the road and, and dying. So during kitten season, we are very busy. So Matt feeds for us on weekends. So he works here and he's also one of our employees at Horse Plus. And uh, so you also deliver feed too. Right, right. So, feed yep. Weekend. Yep, so he's a busy guy. So yeah, I just wanna thank everyone so much on Facebook for donating for this manure spreader. So when it's sitting on its tires and we clean the stalls, we put it in there. And when it's driving, the manure gets pushed out and those little legs there kick it out and spread it. It's very cool, we're excited about it. But we're gonna get some shavings too while we're here. During the last auction rescue we did, this mat that was here in the middle had a big kind of rip in the middle of it. I mean, it's, it's really old. It's been used for a long time. And so Corey talked to me this morning because he's making the obstacle course and he's, hey, I really need a mat. So he took the old mat out of here for his obstacle course he's making for the horses. So we're getting a new mat to replace the old one. So we just got to get gas um, for the tractor and the side-by-sides. Um, we have the feed wagon and um, also the um, one that's used for cleaning out stalls. So we do go through a lot of gas. And I know this isn't your typical uh, episode, go shopping with Tawny and buy stuff, but hey, why not? All right, we've got about $100, just over $100 in fuel, and we can head back to the shelter now because everything is checked off the list. So I got the list from everybody before I left, and they had all different types of things they needed, uh, but we've got it all. Well, my mom's been looking for a mini for a while. She wants to get one for my four-year-old granddaughter, and she fell in love with Mary Legs. So she's going home with me until Ella's birthday in November and we're taking her up to Michigan and she's gonna be sweet little four-year-old's best friend. The cat adopters just arrived and we're gonna get their paperwork and get them set up to see their new cat. Who was it you said you were looking space. at? Like, space. I wanted to call him everything but space. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Huh? You've never been in here before, have you? You guys have other cats? Or? We had one and yeah. we have a couple dogs, but I was ready to get another cat. I know, I know. Never going to he was the road. I, I saw his picture and I was like, for some reason we, we had this we had this connection, I thought, before we even met. <laughs> I've seen like articles, it's like, why you need more than one cat? And I'm like, I'll we'll just start with one. Do one again. Well, you can always come back and get more. Yeah. Always. Yep. Are you gonna yeah. adopt? I think um, we're gonna go with space. Space? Yeah. 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 yeah it's gonna work out of there. Hello. <laughs> Here is uh, space's information. This is his microchip. Oh, this is his contract that you signed, and um, this is how to get the microchip into his name, okay? Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you. you. Space just got adopted into his new forever home, and hopefully they'll come back again and get another cat or maybe a horse.
All right, y'all, I'm trying to film the sawdust being delivered and I have a buddy that has decided she crawled all up my leg and then up on my shoulder and is hanging out with me, so. Bugs, what do you think, huh? A surrender is here and we're gonna get him checked in. Uh, we've had her for the last year and a half, and uh, before that, she's just been a brood mare. So she's darkening up, but she's that true blue or whatever whenever she sheds for spring. Oh, yeah, all surrenders have to take 20 cats oh. <laughs> or two or one. They're all crying over there. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. We so appreciate you bringing her here. And well, we did. You know, it's, it's really hard. And everybody wanted her to breed her, and we're like, well, she can't be bred anymore. And so, we have to make sure she went to a place where she's not going to be bred anymore. We won't let anyone with a stud adopt a mare. Yeah. So we know yeah. they get geldings. Yeah. <laughs> so, as far as possible, yeah. we would try to keep her from from yeah. being bred again. Nico was just surrendered. She seems like a really beautiful horse. She was a brood mare, and they didn't want her to be uh, bred anymore because she had some health complications. So they drove quite a long way, over five, about four or five hours, to come and um, surrender here at our facility. We're so thankful for those who choose to surrender their horses instead of um, taking them to the auction while they'll go to the slaughter pipeline. Today we're having a employee education and also uh, employee of the quarter award and uh, going over jobs for next year. Uh, at Horse Plus we have jobs that um, our busiest year time of the year is like March through uh, November. And so we kind of put out, we have a lot of young people that work here at our facility and you know, it's kind of giving them the option, you know, do you want to work next year? Uh, you know, maybe there's college or you know, a, a big long trip that they want to do or something. So they just are going to be listening to all the job descriptions. Um, after the educational video, we're going to be showing about the horses in the slaughter pipeline and seeing if they want to reapply for the jobs um, for next year. And then um, maybe, maybe they want to apply for a different position. So we just kind of open all the job positions up to the staff. And then if those aren't filled, then they'll be available to the public. So we do uh, in-house first and then to the public for job positions. Why do we do what we do? Uh, anyone know? Just to rescue as many horses as possible. Okay, so rescuing as many horses as possible. What are we rescuing them from? We rescue them from the slaughter pipeline. How many horses go to slaughter pipeline? You watch those records. Like each year? Or on a day, a week? Um, yesterday there was 105 that went to So 105 horses yesterday went into Mexico for slaughter. So if we're rescuing these horses from slaughter, it's good to know the process of what's behind this industry and how, how, how does it work? Because if we really don't understand why we're rescuing them, it kind of makes it harder, especially when we have to make end of life decisions of, well, we got this horse, it seemed okay. You know, maybe we shouldn't have gone to the auction and rescued it. This one doesn't say it, but it's, it's the kill pen. It's a big business and it is a big business. And there's an excellent organization called Animal Angels that investigates kill buyers. And um, we're gonna pull up an article. Jason's gonna read it. And you'll recognize one of the names, at least I know. And I want you to pay attention as it's being read for how many horses these, these folks are shipping to slaughter just in Tennessee. And this is just one state. So now for the employee of the quarter. Dear Maddie. Jasmine, this is Sarah with the cat and Jesse with the horse and they're going to help you with Danny and then when you're done we'll see you back at the office, okay? Cool. So she's been having a little bit of a runny nose mm -hmm. 
and she's kind of on vet watch. We've got her on a little bit of medicine. And then she's got a little swelling on that back left. We haven't done her teeth at all since she's been here either. Okay. No, um, she is on a scoop of senior and a scoop of alfalfa, just cause she was a little, yeah. And she's two, correct? Yeah, right around two. All right, she's gonna adopt Denny. Yay! Go right ahead. Go get you. How exciting. Thank oh, you so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all have a great day. Guess what? Denny just got adopted. She's been here for a little bit, but um, she's just two years old, so we have a lot of young ones right now that are kind of hard to get their homes, so we're very thankful that Denny is on her way to her new home. So I went to Tractor Supply, picked up the manure spreader. It was late in the day, so when I got it back, um, we weren't able to unload it, but this morning, uh, Corey and Travis are gonna use their muscles to, uh, to pull this thing out. I'm gonna hold the gate open because that thing's really big and heavy, so. Um, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all of our Facebook fans who donated to our Facebook fundraiser to get the new manure spreader. Oh, whoops. <laughs> we don't want Travis to end up in the manure spreader. Well, we finally got the new manure spreader. Our old one has been kind of giving me troubles for a long time and I'm so happy to have a new one. Uh, I think it's going to be really great for the uh, shelter to have the new one. Um, hopefully I don't have to fix it as much as the last one. I'm going to go get some tools to start um, taking it apart and then putting it back together in the proper way. The old manure spreader we had, I actually purchased at Oktoberfest, which is a uh, very fun um, southern get together basically every fall there's a huge uh, festival and yard sales and whenever i go there i look for um, stuff we can use here at the organization and we'd always talked about getting a manure spreader and i found one and uh, it was pretty old though and um, i it was super cheap so i'm like okay let's buy it and it there's a reason it was cheap but it has worked well here at our organization it showed us how much we need a manure spreader and um, Travis was always like, can we please get a new one? And I'm like, you know what, I'll ask our Facebook fans. We'll put up a fundraiser because they are expensive and we'll see what happens. And your all's uh, love and support just came pouring in and I was able to order it and here it is. And I'm sure it's going to serve uh, our organization for many, many years. So thank you so much. Are you happy now? Yes, I am happy now. Add the shovel to the back, and you're ready to go. I am writing the names of all the people who donated so we could get the manure spreader. So we've had a couple grant applications come in that I wanted to talk to you about and they've kind of piled up a little bit since you've been gone and I've been gone and yeah. now we're back here in the office. The grants so. are, um, there's a lot of grants that come in here and we've done I'm kind amazing of this up. year. <laughs> amazing this year, so. Yes, let's see, this first one is from Hasty's Haven. They have, they just took in an owner's vendor pony she is neglected, possibly foundered. She needs hoof care and x-rays and stuff. So they're sending this urgent need grant to Okay, it. so the normal intake cost okay. for a grant. 
And this is a picture of her. Yeah, her feet are pretty messed up. Yeah, you can tell from there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now we can Very definitely so. hopefully help with that. So, Crossroads Animal Rescue, which is based Our in South printer. Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Our printer is having issues, so. They're based in South Carolina. They rescued a severely malnourished horse. She's very bad off. Wow. Poor thing. So they're She's also asking really, for really intake bad. help. Yeah, the so just the, the standard intake okay. grant. We like assisting other organizations when they're taking horses in that may need a little extra help. Because uh, if we can enable other organizations across the United States, instead of churning away a horse that needs extra help, that they, they can take that horse and they can apply for a grant and get some of those costs covered. So uh, we, we definitely like to, to help with that as much as possible. And this one's from Indonesia. Right, this is Horses for Gilly, of Gilly. This is another horse. He's in pretty bad shape. He actually needs, he's not on their island, but he needs to be transported to their island, so. That's pretty amazing when they rescue these ponies. There's all these little islands over in Indonesia that where this rescue is at, and so they actually have to go on boats and get these ponies and bring them and back she's got, to help. she's got pictures on their Facebook page. Yeah, amazing, amazing organization. Ponies taking their boat, yes. boat ride. <laughs> boat ride to safety. <laughs> Usually it's a trailer ride to safety, and Indonesia ends up being a boat ride to safety. <laughs> so in Indonesia, when um, this, if this organization does not take these these ponies, because they use them for cart ponies on this island, there's only transportation, transportation is. is these ponies. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help them and get them to safety, they won't be slaughtered. And she's told me that I mean, she has witnessed horse slaughter in the States. She says it's absolutely horrific what they, they put these ponies through with slaughter. So we definitely try to help her with these as, as much as possible. She's um, doing a great work. Amazing, amazing work. Horses of Gilly, check them out on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, a and A Horse Haven. We haven't helped very many horses in Kentucky so far. We've only helped one. Just one horse in Kentucky. This is an urgent need grant. They've taken in two Belgian horses with have, that both have leg issues. They've got old injuries that some might need surgery to survive. They have a mass needs to be taken out. When rescuing draft horses, usually they don't end up in the slaughter pipeline until they have some major issues. Um, a lot of draft horses we get at auction are, are in really rough condition. Um, there was one mare that we rescued recently and her leg was completely shot. And uh, she'd been a brood mare for who knows how long with that leg like that until it just got so bad they took her to auction. So it's, it's rough. And I, I love the grant program because we're able to help horses across the United States because we can only shelter and rescue, you know, so many horses here at our facility. And, you know, basically we're maxed out from what we and a team here can do. Um, so just doing that to the best of our ability and then helping other organizations across the United States rescuing even more horses. So, uh, and also across the world, we hope to next year really open up our national grant assistance programs because we know people in, uh, you know, third world countries rescuing horses, the challenges are even way harder than what we see here in the United States. Our grant program has done amazing this year. We're just piloting it um, to see how it worked out this year and we are helping so many horses. If you look at our map here, each one of these little pens represents a horse that we have helped in that state, or in this case, Indonesia. Uh, so we give grants out to nonprofit organizations for auction rescue, slaughter pipeline rescue, getting horses before they end up at the feedlots, um, gelding, last act of kindness, and also urgent need situations. Uh, we also help uh, private horse owners with gelding operations and also the last act of kindness, because if somebody can't afford to have their horse humanely euthanized, we don't want that horse to end up at an auction instead. So we try to, we try to help and be as proactive as we can. And just for this year, uh, so far, it's amazing to see uh, this map and what we're, what we're accomplishing across the United States and the world. This is Titan. He was adopted out at our last adoption event and the family 
is moving and since Titan is older they decided they wanted to surrender him back here to the shelter so he's here now Garrick just dropped him off and we're gonna see about finding him a new home Middle. All right, the kittens are back from the vet, neutered and spayed, and now they're getting pain meds. Huh? You want it locked up this weekend? So begins another day at Horse Plus. But on the bright side today, I have a shirt. Modeling off the Horse Plus shirt. Jenny's been pretty lame, so we're gonna see if she has an abscess or if there's something else going on. What we have is an abscess right here. It's right in here, right above the tip of the frog. It's extremely sore. Let's see if we can't get her back on the road to recovery with it. So this stuff is really good for abscess. The best part about copper tox is once you get it on your hands, you can wear it for a week. Hopefully we can get her back on the road to recovery. Fixing Jenny up, and um, if y'all look over here, yeah, and it's not the same on her other side, so yeah. This is Nico, she was surrendered yesterday and she's due for a trim, so we're just gonna get her done. You can tell it's starting to cool off. These horses are starting to put some hair on. There's one problem though, that we're gonna have to get lined out. Doc's got a Horse Plus shirt with his name on it. I don't know how I'm gonna get that worked out, but I'm gonna get me one with my name on it somehow. These horses have to know who's working on them. I mean, they can read. They wanna know my name. Let's see if she'll let me put it up on the stand, do a little dressing. Let me see if I can make you pretty. But if we have to, we'll reset them. We'll make something work. Hey, Sarah, what? I'm trying to be on video here. Well, I'm this trying is, to ask you This is questions. big things going on here. I know. Let me tell you what's gonna happen if it gets negative 20. Yeah, that's when I'm gone. I'll see y'all. I'll be out of here. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. Somebody calling me. Hello. I'm shooting a horse, a horse plus. I'm on TV right now. Why are you calling me? You know I'm on video. Oh, he's calling me back. Well, let me call you back again because I'm in the middle of doing something here. We're on live TV. Today, I had a great revelation. Uh, I stopped at the gas station. They have sun drop in the slushy version. <gasps> no way. And in I a was Pepsi like, cup. where's the biggest cup? They had little cups. So I said, no, 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 we're going. I had to walk come over to the Coke station and get, I got me a big cup. This is Baya, she just came out of quarantine not that long ago, and we're gonna try to do her feet. We don't know, actually know how handled she is, so it'll be interesting to see how she does. It's all right, it's all right. Can I have this foot? Thank you. Don't climb it, they'll bring you feed. Come on, baby, there you go, good, good. This is Titan, he just came back today. Um, they were moving and didn't want it, they weren't able to bring him with him, with them. So he's just getting his feet done because he needs them done. Yeah, we can work with that. I think so. We'll make that happen right there. Gracious, what a foot. It's like putting a shoe on the bottom of a five gallon bucket. 